check this bike out. Just found this on Facebook for 850 bucks. It was up for 12, the guy came down to 850. So this is a pretty cool bike. This is 1982 Yamaha YZ125. And as you can see, it's all original, all complete, and actually in pretty decent shape. Pretty cool looking bike. So in 1982, Yamaha actually came out with the YPVS system. So this is the Yamaha power valve system. This is the first year they introduced power valves. So the first year of the power valves in any Yamaha YZ125. So pretty cool year. And they also redesigned the suspension in 1982. You can see the weird linkage there. <laughs> that was new in 1982. Now these bikes were supposed to have the most horsepower and be the fastest 125 in 1982. So definitely a cool find. You can see the gold rims. This is Japan. These are the original gold rims. Has the stock silencer on there yet. The pipe is immaculate. Not a single dent in the pipe. Really, really nice. You can see this gold rim is in perfect condition. And then what's really cool is the way they put the radiator. So the, the plate right here actually has a venting system cool down the radiator which is at the top right there um, the seller said he bought this from Chicago he was gonna restore it but he said it was just too much for him so what he said was that he bought it from a guy who said it was running and driving great and then the clutch went out so that's how he bought it he said the side cover was off and he bought it and he actually bought a bottom end to replace the clutch and he said he dug into it and it was just too much he couldn't figure it out so here's the second bottom end with the original clutch and the, the used clutch from this bottom end. So he said uh, it should match up with uh, the original and it should just bolt right on. And uh, he said that the bike was running and driving before that clutch was taken apart. Obviously without the clutch in place, it's not gonna be able to kick over. So we don't know if it has compression. Wasn't able to test that at all. But uh, he said the seller gave him a video of it running and driving. Only a cool find, and I think for 850 bucks, we can't really lose on this one. Today, we're going to try to repair the clutch side, get this kickstart lever to work, and we'll see if we have spark compression. And obviously, we're going to see if this thing fires up. All right, little walk around to the bike. Vinny. You can see no breaks in the plastic at all. Fenders look great. Gas tank's a little stained, but really not a lot of scratches. You can see plastics look really good there. Rear fender isn't broken. And like I said before, no rips in the seat. Something is pretty clean. Looks like Vinny's sniffing out the suspension right away. <laughs> he likes those gold rims too. But yeah, cool little radiator up at the top here. The seller said he drained the coolant and the oil from it. So everything's dry right now. We got no gas in it either. So let's get in the garage, start looking at it. And uh, we'll see what we find. It should be an interesting one for sure. All right, we got the bike in the garage. Let's start working on it. So we're gonna do a quick once over on this bike and check everything out before we start digging into it. So coolant we saw was empty. So we don't have to drain that. You can see nothing in there at all. So I'm pretty sure the guy said there was no oil in it, but we'll check it, make sure. I'm in there. Nope, completely, completely dry. So, looks like we don't have to drain it. I'm not sure why he didn't put the clutch back in when he put the side cover on. But uh, there is a shifter yet. If there's one in there. 
It feels like every bolt on this bike is loose. Almost like he took it all apart to restore it and then changed his mind. It's kind of what it feels like. Because I can see that the axle bolt's all loose as well. I doubt there's an air filter in here. Oh, there is one. Looking a little dirty, but at least there is one in there. Cool. So hopefully the top end is still fine. We'll figure that out once we start digging into here. Which, uh, let's go look at the clutch parts that came with it. And hopefully it's the right bottom end. You can see the nut for this is just loose. So I'm thinking he had the whole bike apart at one point, so we'll have to check over all the, uh, the nuts and bolts here before we take it for the first ride, if we can get this thing fired up today. All right, we're gonna go right ahead and start taking off the cover here. Racks in the case. But uh, something made this guy change his mind, so hopefully it's nothing serious. I'm always suspect when people say, oh, it's just a little too much work for me. But maybe it was, I don't know. Alright, those are off. Water pump. Let's see what that looks like. See, nothing's, nothing's really tightened down that, that much. Okay, that's good. Impeller's in there. See the cover? Looks good, no corrosion in there or anything. Let's see if that rod's in there. Really hope it is. Parts for this bike are extremely hard to find. Oh, are you serious? Wow. You gotta be kidding me. The power valves are out of it. What? What? Oh, no. I really hope they're in that box. I'm gonna be really mad. Wow. No way. Power valve's just gone. Well, what the heck is going on here? There's like a bunch of metallic flakes in there, too. What the heck? The seller never mentioned that the power valves were gone. Because he said it was a running, driving bike when he bought it from the seller beforehand. Huh. And he said this cover was off when he bought it, so he would know that the power valves were out of it. That's really crappy. No wonder he put the cover back on, you know? <laughs> There's no way you're going to be finding power valves for this bike. I really, really hope it's in that box of parts. So that makes me very suspect about what else is going on behind here. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. How bad is it going to be behind this cover here? See. All right, shifting mechanism still in there. Water pump shaft is still in there. 
Power valve gear is still in there. There's nothing out of the ordinary there. That's good. Let's see, am I missing anything? I'll have to check a parts diagram, but. I'm not feeling any compression either. What the heck? Spark plugs in. I'm turning it over. I don't feel anything. There's zero resistance. <sighs> what is going on here? Listen to that. Are you serious right now? You gotta be kidding me. Crank bearing shot. Piston's just flopping around in there. Oh man, I, I'm getting kinda mad now. This is this is ridiculous. Wow. Transmission? Spin here, let's see, there's neutral, okay. That's good. Oh. All right, so there's neutral. Neutral. First. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Okay, so I think all the gears are there. That's good. Listen to that. The piston's just flopping around. <sighs> so let's go get the parts and see if the power valves are in there. Um, if they're not, I uh, don't know what we're going to do. Alright, so far I'm not seeing any power valves in here. <sighs> so here's the clutch, clutch plates here. Here's one of the clutch baskets. Inner basket. Here's another set. And then here's another one. So we'll just try to come up with something here. Yeah, I don't think there's any power valves in here. Wow. So here's the bottom end. The rod is junk on this bottom end as well. So it's not like we can even swap that. At least it comes with the stator. But it looks like this was all apart. Looks like somebody cut off this gear for the uh, clutch basket for some reason. Because that usually sits right there like that. So I'm wondering. This is the same one. Or is it different? Looks pretty similar. So hopefully that's gonna work out. Otherwise we're we're stuck. Um I don't see any power valves at all. Nothing. Ha. Huh. That's crazy. So he just didn't want to mention that there's no power valves in it. Oh my god. What are we gonna do? Oh boy. So I think what we're gonna do is look at a diagram, see if we can get this clutch side together, see if we have all the parts at least, and uh, kind of piece that together, and see if we can kick this thing over and see if we have any compression. Looks like we have a power valve found. Um, it's 230 bucks. 
So that's a lot of money for one single power valve. That's crazy. There's another one for a hundred bucks. So at least there's some out there. 150 for that one. So that's good, at least they're not like $500, you know. All right, before we can assemble the clutch, we've gotta get the shift shaft in here. So this is the shift shaft adjuster. So this is gonna go like right here. Wow, that is a strong spring. All right, we'll make sure it goes to the gears here. to neutral right there, yep. So it's shifting through the gears, that looks good. So first thing that goes on is that washer behind there. Next thing is the bushing. Goes on like that. And then, The clutch basket goes on here. There we go. And another washer goes on. Then the inner hub goes on. Here. Not. That. Start off with that plate, and then we're gonna have five of these plates going on. So six, six of the friction plates are gonna go on. These all look pretty decent. Not sure why the seller didn't assemble the uh, the clutch. And then one more friction plate goes on. Like so. Got the little bar. Goes on like that. And you've got the clutch springs that go on with the bolts. moving, not rubbing at all. Feels good. Let's see if this thing kicks over. See what this thing sounds like. That might be why I didn't have the clutch in. Oh my gosh. Ha! Huh. Sounds absolutely horrible. There's no way this thing was running. <laughs> Just for fun, let's take a compression rating. I'm guessing it's gonna be zero. Let's just feel. I twist this thing over. I feel absolutely nothing. But we'll get a gauge in there and see. All right, gauge going in. Well, we can also test for spark now that we can turn it over. I'm just really disappointed. I thought for sure 
put the clutch together and uh, get this thing to fire up today. But I don't know. I don't think we have any compression. What do we get? Wow. Let's see if we got anything. <laughs> Maybe like two PSI. You gotta listen to this kicking over too. It's really bad. So I think the guy 100% took out the clutch just so that I couldn't kick it over. Cause this sounds absolutely horrible. I mean the piston knock in there is just horrible. <laughs> that is really bad. Let's test for spark here. Get the plug in. See if at least the stator is fine. Hope it has something here. Nothing. Kidding me. <laughs> really? Wow. No spark either, so pretty tough to have a bike running with no spark. Everything about this bike is bad. It just sounds so bad kicking it over. So, looks like our wires are going to our CDI right here, but nothing's going out. So that's probably why we don't have spark. Up. Shock is pretty cool. Look at this. So it goes all the way through the frame here. You can adjust it right here. Pretty unique. So here are the wires. Let's see, it should be going right to the coil here. There's wires right here. All right, so we're getting somewhere now. So orange. Okay, so there's a red wire there. This is the kill switch. Alright, so we connected the orange wire to the pink wire coming out of the coil. And uh, the other two are for ground, so... And when you press the kill button, it should kill the spark. But let's first see if we have spark, then we'll hook everything up. Hopefully we at least have some spark here. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah. Good spark. So that's good. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but really good spark. So we're gonna try to hook up the kill switch next and see if that works. Alright, all three wires are hooked up. So it was just missing the harness going to the coil and the kill switch for some reason. Not sure why that was taken off, but uh, that was. So black goes to black at the kill switch. Black and white goes to black and white at the CDI. Orange goes to pink. Now let's see if the kill switch works. So we'll see if it works. So we've got spark. Now we're gonna push the kill switch in. And we get no spark. So kill switch is working great. 
So wiring is fixed. We do have spark, which is good. But uh, the piston and I think the rod bearing are shot. We are going to tear this thing down, unfortunately. I thought for sure the top end would be fine and we uh, would just get the clutch cover on and uh, get this thing back together and have it running. It'd be running in like probably 10 minutes from now because um, we got the clutch on and all we have to do is line up the power valve shaft with the power valve and put some gas in it and it would have fired up. But unfortunately we're missing the power valve and this thing has a terrible rod knock. So yeah, not good. All right, we'll get these coolant lines off here. Uh, that line out of the way. Let's see. Uh, they're pretty loose. Yeah. I mean, I'm not putting any pressure on it really. And it, it's twisting that nut off there, so. I'm sure this was off before as well. Looks like there's a bunch of rust right in here going to the coolant line. See what this piston looks like. Ah, it's coming off. Is it missing the head gasket too? Yeah, it's completely missing the head gasket. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Completely missing the head gasket. So this thing was torn apart before. What the heck? No hole in the piston, but look at that. <laughs> I think it's the wrong size piston in there. Way too small of a piston for this bore. Head doesn't look too bad. All right. Let's see what the cylinder wall looks like. I don't think it looks too bad yet. I don't see any scratches on there. But it's just very weird that the piston is that loose. I don't get that. So, I think what we're gonna have to do is tear apart the, uh, the cylinder and see what's going on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this whole bike was torn down. All right, I think the pipe can come off now. I will say that the pipe is in absolutely perfect condition. Not one single dent in that pipe. Silencer looks to be in excellent condition as well. An old Makuni carb. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. Oh, those are loose too. You gotta be kidding me. So he had the whole cylinder off. Wow. Like look how loose those are. 
Let's see if there's any gasket material on the cylinder. Wow. So this whole thing was just taken apart. And uh, sell it like that. Yeah, look at look at the reeds. Those bolts are all loose in there. Huh. Let's see if these are loose on this side. I mean, yeah. Hand tight. Yep. It's just popping up right away. It's not held down by any gasket material. Wow. That's something. Usually you'd have to uh, pound this with a hammer to get this thing off, but I think it'll just pop right off. Yep, look at that. Wow. Kind of looks to me like the cylinder was bored out and never honed, almost. Hmm. The piston here. Oh, look at the rod bearing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> look at that. Wow. Wow, you've got to be kidding me. Wow, wow, wow. Piston wasn't stuck, but I think it was just really way too small for the uh, the cylinder. thing is horrible. I don't know if they just put a random piston in here. Because it just feels really, really small. That bearing's still fine. Sprockets off.
see if it'll palm through. Yeah, that's recently been greased. You can see all the grease on there, so. Engine can come out. All right, engine's out. Let's take a look at the engine. See what's going on on the inside. Hopefully nothing's too badly wrecked. All right, so before we tear into the bottom end, I wanna show you guys how absolutely crazy this is. So check this out. So the cylinder, you can see it doesn't have any scratches, nothing, no imperfections on it. So check this out. Look at how the piston fits in here. Look at the gap there. That's crazy. Let's check the ring gap, just for fun. Here's the ring that was on there. Ring's not even worn down. Check what that's at. It won't even stay in. Look at that ring gap. <laughs> the, the ring doesn't even compress. Look at that. I can just slide it in. So, just for fun, let's see what that ring gap is at. We're putting like 20 feeler gauges together. And it's still bigger. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, this is ridiculous. There's no way the bike ever ran. Okay, that's about right right there. So we've got, add all these up, and that's about the ring gap we're getting. Yeah, what a joke. What a joke. So we're gonna message the guy, and I'll show him a video of the piston in here, and say, explain how that was running before. I mean, come on. All right, let's see what these reads look like. Oh yeah, those look good. Those look really good. Shavings. Almost looks like somebody took a sandblaster in there. Look at that. Super, super bizarre. I don't know what happened to this bike. All right, we've got the bottom end here. You guys could see the rod bearing was just Completely shot. So obviously the crank has to come out. We can go ahead and get the stator off. We at least have spark from this thing. <laughs> so that's one plus. So stator appears to be good. Alright, here's the little puller for it. Knew I had one. Alright. Came right off. There's the stator. There's the flywheel. No damage to either of those. Woodruff key in there. Get that out. You guys can see it right there. So I just like to tap on that a little bit. Pushes right out. Like that.
All right, now we can work on the clutch side. washer whole clutch can pull off washer shifter off there's a little woodruff key in there So let's get the case bolts off over here. I think it's coming now. Let's see. Punch out the crank here. That's on there pretty good. Crank bearings don't feel that bad. Feels pretty good. Transmission all looks good. Yeah, I don't see any teeth broken or anything. They look great. Right, we got the crank out, you can see rod bearing gone. Really, really bad. What's weird is that there's really no metal flakes or anything in here. Just a couple, but uh, yeah. Crank bearings don't feel bad. Every other bearing feels good. So, it's just the rod bearing. Rod bearing's just toast. So, we'll have to see if we can get a new rod pushed onto there. Or get a new crank, we'll see if they have them available. All right, let's take a peek at the carburetor. Can't be worse than the engine. <laughs> That doesn't look too bad. Everything's in there. Floats. A little gunked up, but 
Everything looks to be there. That's working. Let's see, we're running for the main jet here. Um, pretty gunked up. I can't even tell what it's running. See if the pilot's clogged here. Yeah, this bike hasn't ran in a long time. Pilot is clear, actually. That's crazy. Running a 30 pilot. That thing's clear. Let's see what we're at for the, uh, let's see what the air screw's at. Quarter of a turn. <laughs> Choke, that's working. So carb doesn't look bad. I thought for sure something would be missing from the carb, like the floats or something, but everything looks good there. All right, so we have all the parts laid out here. We're gonna need a couple new parts I listed on here. So we need a piston, we need a crank, we need crank bearings, brake, brake pads. The brakes are currently not working at all rear or front, so you got brake pads on there. Power valve, unfortunately, and the cheapest one I could find was 200. Air filter, the one on it's pretty crusty. Gas kit, uh, steering stem bearing, and then the cylinder needs to be bored to match the piston. So the standard size piston for this is 56. We measured the piston to be 56.5, the one that was in it, and we measured the cylinder to be 57.86 millimeters. So obviously they put the wrong size piston in, about a millimeter off. For the piston um, and then uh, so everything totaled up is gonna be 160 for the piston 200 for the crank right around uh, crank bearing 40 brakes 60 power valve is 200 air filter 35 gasket kit 40 steering stem bearing this one's junk it's really really stiff um, so that's gonna be 40 bucks and then the cylinder board 100 so total of all the parts came to 875. We paid 850 for the bike, plus the 875 in parts gives us a grand total of $1,725 into this bike, not including all the labor. So, I mean, is it worth rebuilding? I don't know. I don't know if I should part this thing out or uh, rebuild it. It's uh, it's a really nice bike. So I'm, I'm probably gonna rebuild it. Um, and we'll probably end up having more than $2,000 into it because that was just the cheapest parts I could find on eBay. So yeah, it's uh, it's gonna need a ton of work. I, I bought this thing figuring that uh, it probably needed some clutch work, but I never thought, you know, the, the rod bearing would be junk, the piston would be completely junk and way too small. I thought I was getting a great deal, but of course I was not. <laughs> All right, so I usually don't do this, but uh, I was kind of mad that the seller lied about the bike and everything felt intentional to me. Um, you know, having the clutch removed, not being able to kick over the bike kind of felt suspicious. So I messaged the guy, I said, hey, I was working on this dirt bike today. It looks like the whole power valve system um, is missing. Piston was completely wrong sized, way too small for the bike. Rod bearing is bad. We'll need whole bottom and top and uh, rebuild. There is no way this bike ever ran the way it was. And he said, are you serious? So I sent him the videos and uh, he hasn't responded. So it's a bummer, but uh, he live, you learn. And uh, hopefully next time we won't get scammed on the bike. So thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video. And until next time, we are.